Welcome to episode six of the Blue Collar Coder Introduction to React series. I'm Jack Harrington, at Jahur on Twitter. So one of the primary skills that you need as a web developer is to understand how to do asynchronous work. If you're gonna to talk to a web service, it's gonna be asynchronous. So in this one, we're gonna learn how to do just that. So without further ado, let's jump into the code. So our requirements have changed, and now we have to load this Pokemon file, not from a file, but from a web service. So to imitate that, we're gonna go and take the Pokemon JSON file and move it from source to public. And now we see immediately upon reload that we failed to compile. That file is now missing. So let's go and remove the import. So the first thing we need is a place to put the data that we get after we load it. So we'll go and create another use state and we'll call a value and value setter coming out of use state, Pokemon and Pokemon set. And we'll just initialize that with an empty array. And that means that the UI will always be alive. There just won't be anything to search on until we get the data. So we can type in anything we want and there's nothing to find. So we're gonna use a new effect. We're gonna use react.useEffect. And what this does is it runs a function in reaction to a change. So I'll specify the function first. And the second argument is an array of values that when they change, you want that original function to run. So in this case, for example, if we wanted to change on filter, we could just type in filter there. But if you leave it blank, if you just have an empty array, what happens is react use effect gets run once when the component is first put onto the page and then never run again. And that's what we're going to do in this case because we wanna go get the data once, essentially on page load, and never get it again. So I'm just gonna use a standard fetch. And then let's go get the URL for this. It's pokemon.json, which is great, on localhost, under starting React. So I'll just paste in localhost, and then type in the rest of the URL. Now fetch gives us a promise, so we need to call dot then on it. And the first thing it gives us is a response, so we need to ask for the JSON response on that. So we'll give it a function that takes just the JSON response. And then once we got the JSON response, we can cascade that then by creating another then, which has the data. And at this point, all we need to do is call Pokemon set with that data. And there you have it. So now we've got the data, the Pokemon data, being dynamically loaded onto the page. And if you wanna see that happen, we'll go over to the inspector and then click on network. And go to XHR and refresh the page and you can see Pokemon.json being loaded. So that's one way of doing asynchronous work in React. You could also do this on an on-click handler if you wanted to load some data or make some post calls in reaction to the user actually making a change or clicking a button. All right, the use effect hook, it could probably use its own video digging into every nook and cranny. In fact, I've got that one on the list to do later on. So in the meantime, until I create that video, uh, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to put those in the comment section down below. If you go into the description, you'll find a link to my newsletter. And if you sign up, then every week you'll get access to one of these videos a day earlier than everybody else. And it's free, and it's got JavaScript tips and tricks, and it's got links. Ah, it's awesome. Of course, if you like this video, be sure to like and share it. And uh, I'm always down for a subscribe if you wanna do that. In the meantime, be happy, be healthy, and be safe.